Okay, next up, my next guest is living his authentic life. <laughs> we have a Kirkland-based novelist and advocate for racehorse welfare. His new book, Heliacal Star, is a horse racing thriller that draws from his own experience and love of the sport. Victor Bana, welcome to New Day. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I am a big horse girl. I love, you know, anything to do with horses, so I was really excited to read your Out book. Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get into that book, I do want to talk a little bit about your background for someone that might not know. So if you can explain how you got into race horses. Sure. Uh, I grew up on Long Island and not too far from Belmont Racetrack. And in high school, we would uh, find our way to the racetrack. And really the first time I went there, I got hooked. It was the excitement. It was the adrenaline. It was just the the thrill of, of you know being able to, to win a bet even. So um, if you kind of fast forward then, I moved out to Washington in about the mid-90s mm -hmm. and found myself uh, at an owner seminar at Emerald Downs in the early 2000s talking about ownership. And I thought, wow, that would be a really interesting uh, opportunity. So I, I pursued that, uh, became an owner. And as I became an owner, that really brought my awareness in terms of what happens to these horses because my horse was no longer able to race. And I was thinking to myself, okay, well, what, what comes next? And who, was that your first horse? What was your first horse? My first name? horse's name was Rooster City. Okay. And Rooster City is still with me today. Oh, amazing. He's, How old is Rooster City? Rooster is 18. Okay, perfect. We call him Rooster now. We take, it, <laughs> take the city away. Um, he, so cute. Look at him there. I love it. He is, uh, he's 18 years old. He's out in Redmond. And uh, I get out there a couple times a week. And he's, he's been a tremendous uh, you know, help for me as well. Was he a racehorse then before, and then you? Rooster was a great racehorse. Yeah, really. He won. He won multiple races. He won up in Canada. He won here at Emerald Downs. He won down in Southern California. He won in uh, San Francisco. So, he had quite the career as a racehorse. Oh my gosh! And when you were at Emerald Downs, is that where you would say you kind of inspired you to write this novel? Yeah, as an owner and as a breeder and as someone that retires racehorses, um, I and I, someone that likes a good story too. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I sort of put all that together and thought to myself, yeah, why don't I write a story and let's talk about some of the things that may happen on a racetrack, you know, from the foaling of the horse through the auction ring, through the racing, and, and then you know, potentially what might happen later as well. Yeah, and that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't like to touch on because um, it's maybe not always the most positive story or angle about life or a racehorse after the track. Right. So is is that kind of the storyline too? Not giving it's, too much yeah, away. Yeah, it's it's one of the storylines. There's there's a few storylines that are interwoven in there. Um, we follow the character. His his name is Matt, uh, and he's a horse racing fan, but he's also a bookie in his past with some mobsters. But he left on pretty poor terms uh, about a dozen years ago, and he comes across. He discovers this horse, uh, Heliacal Star, uh, on a sort of a hunch bet and he gets to really uh, has an affinity for the horse because he won the bet and then he's at the track uh, a few a little a little bit later and he takes a sneak peek into the barn area he's not supposed to be there but he sneaks back there and as he's approaching the barn he hears a uh, conversation with uh, one of the former mobsters that he used to work with but mm. obviously they're not uh, they're not uh, getting along anymore and so he's got a dilemma. He's got to decide if he's going to actually report what he hears to the authorities, which could put him at risk because he'll have to face those mobsters again, which he did not leave on good terms with. Yes. Or, you know, does he just stay quiet and let it go? And so that's sort of the nexus of the story. But as far as the racehorse goes, um, he could he ends up in a he he ends up in a in a difficult situation because. Some horses do fall through the cracks, and in this case, the, the horse Helical Star falls through one of those cracks, and we have to follow him as well. It's such a good story. I'm almost done. So, yeah, you can't, you can't give anything away there. And what do you want people to know about what a good retirement looks like for these beautiful yeah. racehorses? So thoroughbreds in particular, they love to have a job. And there's so many things that they could do when they're off, off the racetrack. Um, and that's what I discovered. When my horse was no longer able to race anymore, it was a light bulb moment because what do we do now? Exactly. And so you, you could breed them, you can 
for, for racing, if, if, uh, if the female line is especially. But you can also put them in shows. They, they like to do dressage. They could do jumping. They could be trail That's horses. That's my world, yeah, yes. They could, be, they could be trail horses. They could be lesson horses. They could be therapeutic horses. Um, there's so many different options for these horses, and there's so much more awareness now with regard to that. Mm -hmm. So that we're seeing far fewer um, problems, you know, far fewer horses are falling through those cracks, but they still do exist, and we still have to make sure we, we close off those holes. And that's why I love you're bringing a light to this topic because, you know, just bringing awareness around this for hopefully a lot more horses to have I, I beautiful retirement. I think it's so important, especially as an owner uh, and a breeder of racehorses, to make sure that they end up in a safe place. That's the most important thing, regardless of what they end up doing, whether they're just out in pasture or they have a job, getting them to a safe place and ensuring that they're going to be in a safe place so that they don't wind up in one of those bad places. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more special than the bond that you have with a horse. So you have two horses, right? Talk about your second horse. Um, I have another horse who's at the track right now. Oh. His, his name is Bang and a Boom. Okay, look at that name. I like it. And he, had, <laughs> <laughs> he debuted at Emerald Downs uh, a few weeks ago. I think it was the 14th of September. Uh, he ran second in the race, just missed by just a tiny bit, but he had a great first effort for him, and we have a lot of high hopes for him going forward. Def well, one to look for, for sure. And how have horses in general, I mean, I love this question because it's yeah. so special to me, but how have they enriched your life? When I retired Rooster, I didn't know what to expect. And Rooster has become such a great coach actually and almost a teacher for me and being in in tech and being you know life is stressful jobs are stressful everything is stressful and getting out to the farm just sort of you decompress and you feel that sort of stress leave your body and roosters really taught me several things like when things are starting to heat up de-escalate you know, when you're around a horse the last thing you want to do is amp things up and amplify because they'll they'll respond to that yes. you you want to relax you know even if you're nervous and tense when you're getting on him the more you relax the more he's going to relax um, be kind just be kind you know horses love kindness and they'll return that kindness back to you and you also have to pay attention too because if you don't pay attention you know they might do something when you're not looking so you want to make sure you do that and probably the last thing and all of these i think apply to the job to life in general is is just work as a team you have to be you know, in tandem with, uh, with what he's doing. So you gotta read him, he's gotta read you. And I've learned all of that specifically with, uh, with Rooster. Wow, you have put that into such, it's just so beautifully said. And, and I'm sure you know that too. I, I you, do, you and that it too. gets me just really, uh, yeah, you just reflect on the incredible bond that you have with a horse and rider. Yeah. So thank you so much for shedding a light on this important topic and sharing your love for horses. Thank you so much for having <laughs> me. I really appreciate it. Of course.